Hey guys, this is John and welcome to another using the clock as a weapon video. I try to play quickly, of course, use my time well, and ideally put my opponent under pressure in this series. Many of you have commented that that's often uh, not a thing that happens in this series and I'm the one who's under pressure, but I will try to prove you wrong at some point and prove that I can, in fact, use the clock as a weapon. So hope you are all well. Uh, just to rip the band-aid off right away, as per the title of this video, it, it is with a heavy heart that I have to announce that I've decided to give up the Scandinavian defense. And trust me, guys, that is not a decision I've taken lightly. It's, it's one of the most difficult decisions I've ever had to make in my life, certainly in chess. I will be talking a bit more about it as this video continues, but yeah, I just wanted to rip the band-aid off right away and let you guys know. But let's let's focus on this game. Oh, I might have had bishop b5 there, but I do like my position at present. I think I still have this move going after the rook. I changed up the board layout, by the way. There was mixed feedback. Okay, my opponent just resigned. <laughs> we'll take that one. The rook is under attack, and if black puts a piece here, we can take because we have more attackers than they have defenders. Also, bishop c6, I've got that covered. I wouldn't have resigned that myself, but my opponent did give up. But yeah, I changed up the, the piece layout again. I went back to the OG bases style. This is bases pieces and bases board on chess.com. I was, I kind of liked the last one, but it seemed like you guys weren't uh, as big a fan. So, <laughs> you know, I was on the fence about it anyway. So I um, decided to go ahead and and uh, try it again. Oh, yeah, and I, I actually played pawn d5. Even though this is not the Scandinavian, I've been trying to cope with uh, basically having to part with the Scandinavian in my repertoire, and I've been meaning to avoid the move pawn d5. My, my hand just like did that kind of out of uh, muscle memory, but I am going to try to avoid playing pawn d5 in, in virtually any capacity with, with um, the black pieces, so... Do watch out for that change in my repertoire. So I'm playing Uono. Old habits die hard, though, as you guys know. And an opening like the Scandinavian that served me for so many years, it's just like putting on your, your favorite sweater. You know, or that t-shirt that you've had in your drawer that you have a lot of memories with. Uh, you look at it. And it's just so hard to throw it away, despite people saying, get rid of it. It has a million holes in it. Why are you holding on to it? And I've often felt that way with the Scandinavian when uh, Stockfish, you know, now we're on Stockfish 13 plus NNUE. I mean, these AIs, they routinely poke holes in the opening. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's kind of a sad day because it's finally got to me and I've, I've had to admit defeat. This position, though, looks pretty good. I like my attack here. Is he going to go knight b5? I'll throw in this move first just to stop knight b5. But we're keeping the tension between the bishops because I want to take a la the dragon. I want to take and, and open some lines. Okay, a3 or maybe queen c5. What to do? What to do? My pieces are kind of poorly placed on the king side. However... In general, I like my attacking chances here, but let's see. Okay, c3. Hmm. Do I start getting the knights in the action? I could also play b5, but I feel like b4 is coming, so I might want to, at minimum, take and open the position. This is a queen a7. Queen a7 here. Let's do that. This is probably going to be kind of a race position where my opponent's going to look to maybe play f5 as soon as possible i would shut down this bishop for sure yep but okay let's let's get organized i might even castle just trying to get some pieces in the fray yeah castling seems wise here he probably wants to keep this pawn on f5 as long as possible i don't know who this player is icelandic player that's the flag of iceland ah david kjartensen I'm actually friends with him on Facebook, funnily enough. You know, I don't think we've ever met. We have some mutual friends. Okay, b4. So I think he's probably going after this pawn then. Beautiful place, Iceland, by the way. 
Ooh, I have this. This looks actually pretty tempting. I'm going to do it. Remove the defender here. Highly recommend you guys try to get to Iceland at some point. Uh, there's the Reykjavik Open every year. Unfortunately, it hasn't taken place the past uh, year. Or maybe it did take place in 2020 before the pandemic, but definitely not this year. Now, do I take... The queen is under attack. So I think I can take. Let's do it. Okay, now take here as planned. Threatening that. Ooh, my tactical sense here is going nuts. Knight takes e5. Oh, I don't have much time. Okay, um, let's take here first, and then knight takes e5. Bearing down on the d3 point, also maybe knight c4. This bishop is back in the action. This position has got to be winning, but we need to play fast. Not sure about that last move I made, but there's rook a3 as well. I wasn't quite sure about it. Maybe I should just take this pawn. We'll see. But getting my king a little bit safer seems in order. Okay, take. He's sacking. That wasn't a huge surprise, I would say. He's got to try something. You got to rock the boat here if you're white. So, makes sense. Now knight f3 is a threat. Oh, no, it's not. Queen c7. Okay, just take precautions here. Uh, take here. Okay, check. And just advance. This is coming. I'm up a kajillion pawns here. That's actually a unit of measurement, kajillion. All right, and we're rewarded with a victory. Yeah, I like how that turned out in terms of the bishop on h7 eventually getting in the action, trying to fire away against the pawn on d3. So I do like the initiative I got. It seems like, yeah, already around here, I bet the position is excellent for black. Um, sorry, it keeps pulling up another game. I'm following one of these players or, yeah. Some, some match they're having, but let's get on to the next game. Okay, Bluffer 6-6, six, six. D4. Yeah, and I'm really going to make an effort not to put the pawn on D5. Let's play, you know, let's play G6. I'm not even going to touch the D pawn. It just brings too many unpleasant memories. Uh, again, you know, I was making the sweater analogy, the old shirt analogy. If you've been in a long relationship, just anything that reminds you of that person or anything that reminds you of that opening can be you know, a potential potential trigger for your emotions. And to play good chess, you got to keep your emotions in check. So I think it's best I just more or less leave that pawn um, away from the d5 square. I did have to play d6 in this setup, but I'll try to keep it away from, from d5. Let's go knight g4. I'm going to try to rotate the knight into e5. Let's play this one first, see what white does. Good player here, 2706. Cannot take such a player lightly. Bishop d7 followed by b5 is a potential plan. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm not gonna think twice about this. I'm going for that, followed by knight g4, knight e3. Ooh, is white gonna go here? That would be gutsy. It was probably actually the best move. So now, wait, do I have this? Check. Ooh, look at this. He has e3. Oh, this is gonna hurt though. Look at this. King f1, knight e3 check is a royal fork on those three pieces, right? And king h1, knight f2, king g1, we get the old windmill, knight takes d1. Whew! We don't need that pawn on d5. 
Yeah, pawn on d6 or d7 is just fine. This is how you get over your ex. Okay, so my opponent is really pausing to think here, but they resign. Yeah, knight takes f2. Knight fork distance is a huge tactical signal, so the fact that I had both knights here, which I'm glad in hindsight that I went with this knight. Well, I probably should take it, knight takes e5 or ignore it, maybe develop bishop here or here or something. Although bishop b2, I could perhaps try the same thing in the future. But hey, three for three, let's keep going. Let me just close this game. Okay, playing Bleffer again. Uh, let's play knight f3. I seem to be doing okay with this. Flexible move in the opening. We will play a mainline King's Indian defense. Shall I play my variation I have in my d4 course on Chessable? My free d4 course, that is. I believe over 10,000 people have studied that course. Whoa. Hello? Is it me you're looking for? Because I am definitely looking for your rook. Okay, so I've been gifted some, some major tactical opportunities by my opponent here already. Uh, now, they probably will get that knight. I, feel, I have an eerie feeling I've been in this position before, but let's just keep the moves going. I'll get one pawn for it. This, there's still work to be done here. That must be said. Like, this is not over. Uh, bishop takes a7, maybe. Hmm. Knight b6 might even be a better move. Let's do that. Because, yeah, that, the, one of the minor pieces was going to be lost there. Uh, the knight, basically. But I did win a rook straight up earlier, so I'm not unhappy about that. No, I'll probably just castle. Or h3 first, maybe? Let's go h3 first. Just so if take, take, I can attack the knight and maybe keep it out of d2 in case of a capture. Now, just don't get too paranoid about threats here, John. It's not necessary. Um, yeah, just bring this rook to the center. Maybe knight d2 coming up. You guys know the drill. When you're up in material, trade down. Offer trades. A3? Nah, let's play B3. Keep this knight at bay. Knight B4 might be coming. I could always take and then play knight E4, but I'd probably prefer to keep my dark square bishop. Uh, take, he's going to take with the knight, but I have B4 after that. Don't I? Let's do it. Use the clock and the material as a weapon, John. Okay. Hmm. Let's just take. I want to keep my structure together if possible. All right. Good move. Good move. Here, though. Block that dark square bishop. Allow the knight in. I think that's okay, though. We're on our way to converting. Rook d8, I'm thinking maybe bishop c4 against that. Look for a swap of the light square bishops. Handy move, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, take. Jump the knight up. Maybe knight a5 next. Go after the pawn on b7. Now there's some discovered attacks possible. I might be willing to allow knight e2. I think I will. I think I'm just going to go for the pawn on b7. Opponent doesn't even want it, though. Um, okay, I'm still going to allow it. This one just feels easier to convert. Yeah, they still don't want that yet. Okay, play faster, John. Knight takes c5. I can take, and I'm on b7. No big deal.
just one of these positions where black has enough annoying tactical ideas that I have to be kind of careful still. Bring the king up. They can always play knight takes c5. I feel like that might be coming soon, but we'll see. Let's go here. Stop knight c3. I'm going to bring the knight into d6 next. Creating a lot of annoying threats, I'll tell you that. Just simplifying here. Purely going for simplifications. Now he can't take on a3, he's going to lose. Oh, what am I doing? Tricky, tricky. Oh, he flagged though. I did not convert that well. Again, I've, I'm having deja vu because I played this line where I've been like literally up a rook out of the opening, but that knight does get lost. I got to look back and see how better to convert this. I think I actually played this okay, but it just took a long time. And as usual, I didn't use the clock as a weapon. But that's okay. We're uh, we're four out of four. I'm trying to cope with the you know the loss. Yeah, see, my my mouse still hovers over the D pawn. It's it's really hard to break that habit, but I just can't justify it. I mean, new analyses again with Stockfish thirteen plus NNUE. There's too many problems. Just the constant ridicule uh, by some viewers on YouTube, not the majority of you, but certain certain people on YouTube, uh, Twitter. It just takes a toll on you, you know? So I think I've had to, to just face the music after a while. But that's okay. There are plenty of openings out there. I, I will find one for me that I can call my own and make it my mainstay in my repertoire. But there's, there's no rush. This is a period of... of uh, morning, remembering the good times, but yeah, I still I still can't bring myself to put the pawn on d5 as of now, and that's okay. Let's stick with the um, let's stick with the pawn. Try to make this a five out of five session. Yeah, this is an idea, but let's step here. Bishop b6, I can play here or queen e7. Okay, that one. I feel like this is probably the way to go. And now, what to do next? C5 or maybe going for F5. This seems natural, but I'm a little worried about C5 from my opponent. Think, think, think. You know, I'm going to go here. It, it gives the D5 square, so he's probably going to start bringing that knight back, but I'm going to do that. And he wants that knight gone. Understandable. Oh, but then if I move it, there's bishop e7. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well, let's go here, first of all. Let's see how bad white wants that. Oh, I'm way down on the clock. Keep playing fast, John. <laughs> or try to play fast. Let's go f6. Maybe f5 next. If knight d5, I'll play probably queen b7. All right, let's go here, attack the rook. Now I can maybe plant this here. This is a decent plan. Ah, but they go there, okay. Let 
Interesting play. I'll try for knight f4, perhaps. Or g5, knight f4, I'm not sure. Now, structurally speaking, this looks a little tricky. Good opponent here, 2646. Hmm. Wants to go to this square, I think. All right, I'm just going to jump the knight in. I don't see anything better. But at least if the queen goes to a5 after this, I can go check and bishop d4. That is a possibility. So he probably wants to play bishop f2. Well, let's see. Queen there, okay. Well, now let's do this. Use the a-pawn. Okay, now things are turning a little bit. This may not be so bad all of a sudden. Whose pawn is weaker here, this or this? Don't think I have to worry about queen d5 too much. Mm -hmm. mm. Let me take that. Yeah, just give me that. Let's see what happens. I'm going to wait now. We're just going to bide our time. Open things up on that wing. Where's the king coming? Is it going all the way in? <laughs> Bold king. Take. Hurry. Okay. I think I'm actually getting the better of him here. In a way. Oh, oh, draw. Once again, I benefit from my opponent being slow in the final seconds. That was a good game by my opponent, though, it must be said. Yeah, he kept me under pressure throughout there. And I do think I was worse in this Meroxy setup. I think my opponent displayed some nice maneuvering and understanding of the position. Because when you play c5 followed by e5, or e5 followed by c5 in this case, it creates this eye in the middle of the pawn. The eye of the pawn there is weak or the, of the pawn duo, that is. So that's a prime outpost. I thought white was going to go knight c3 and then later try to occupy it. But first he played bishop g5. Smart, because he's trying to get rid of my knight so that there is no opponent to his knight eventually settling here. And I think I managed to create some decent counterplay, but probably I misplayed it somewhere around here. Like after maybe after taking the pawn. I'm not sure taking the pawn was good, but also around here I really struggled to find a plan because I have a bad bishop pawns. You know, predominantly occupying the dark squares. Okay, good session though, four and a half out of five. And yeah, again, this is kind of a video of, of remembrance. Um, I shouldn't make this too much of a uh, morning. I, I just have conflicting emotions right now, guys. So maybe we put it up on the board one more time. Just 
for a proper send-off. Uh, put your Fs in the YouTube chat. Press F to pay respects to the Scandinavian defense. Um, late 1600s to 2021. I do think it's it's dead now. There's too much computer analysis, too much pressure on the opening. People are playing Berlin's and lines of the Sicilian. Theory just continues to extend and expand. And unfortunately, we got to move on. We got to move on and open a new chapter in our lives. So if you have any suggestions for a new opening I can make as my mainstay against E4, let me know. But most of all, let's let's have our period of mourning. Let's remember the good times and continue trying to improve. So as always, thanks, guys. I'll be back again soon with another video, and you all take it easy.